A group of researchers decided to make plant-human hybrid cell lines. Why did they do this? That is a very good question. There has been a lot of research like this in recent years, like putting chloroplast in a hamster cell. Why would you want chloroplast in a hamster cell? I don't know, but it does tell us about maybe how we got mitochondria, and it's also just kind of cool. Also, if you really wanted a photosynthetic hamster, you couldn't. It would be a hamster with diabetes, essentially. You don't need extra sugar being made for you. That's even if the rest of the cellular machinery plays nice with chloroplast. It just, it's not useful. But it is cool. It wasn't really justified all that well, but one might parse that this could tell us an awful lot about hybridization events, assuming humans and plants ever hybridized. Let's talk about it. One of the big questions that people have been trying to answer for quite some time is why we have extra DNA that doesn't seem to do anything. At some point, they thought that roughly 70% of our genomes was just junk DNA. It's even been postulated that it provides some benefit because mutations can happen anywhere, but if you have lots of stuff that's not being used, you have a lower probability of mutations happening somewhere useful. But yes, over the years, we figured out that that junk DNA does, in fact, do stuff. It has stable ends to our chromosomes. It can even be spliced differently, so different parts of a gene can be used. But what happens if we take a plant genome, so something that's potentially much larger than our genome, and something that we really shouldn't be using, and just stuff it in our cells? What, what happens then? So they took the genome of Arapidopsis. It is a legume and it's a commonly used model organism, so it's studied a lot. It's used for kind of the same reason that human cells are used for a lot of research, because we just know it really well. They took roughly half of the plant genome and stuffed it into chromosome 15 in a human cell line. They also added two extra genes. One of them was green fluorescence plasmids, because that's going to show up under fluorescent light. The other one was a blastocytin gene. This was inserted from the plant chromosome and provided resistance to an antibiotic blastocytin. This would tell us how well those genes are maintained and if they are expressed, and they actually were. At around day 60, the human plant cells still had about 45% of the plant DNA still there, and it started to just speckle itself throughout the human genome. By day 300, there was only about 12% of the plant genome left. Though it wasn't being used, it really wasn't useful to the cell, so it just yeeted it. This has been a big conversation in bacteria, because bacteria have such quick cell cycles that if they don't need something, they're unlikely to carry it. But that was not the thought about people cells, and it seems, yes, it is too. Green fluorescence plasmid did remain, as did blastocytin resistance, which is not surprising because they just filled the place with blastocytin, though it did need to maintain it. It even duplicated it over time as the cells divided. But yes, most of the plant genome was no longer present. What did we learn? That tossing a massive amount of DNA from a foreign organism is not likely to be maintained. There's issues like how well the chromosomes line up. There's also issues with whether or not it's being used at all. It is interesting that it got splattered over other chromosomes, though. Basically, your DNA has all these repair mechanisms, and if you have all these random pieces of DNA just lying around, yes, it's going to try to put it where it should maybe go, and it might get it wrong. This is pretty comparable to just blasting cells with radiation. Everything deteriorates and it tries to put it back together, and it doesn't do a very good job. This might also give us information on how genetic engineering is going to work. If we're putting huge swaths of DNA that really shouldn't be in a genome in, your body might not keep it unless it has a reason to. This also interestingly tells us that human cell lines can behave very similarly to bacteria in culture, which I really would not have guessed. A lot of the things that I have learned when I was first taking biology and genetics and molecular biology seem to be now questioned. But a lot of that is my trying to explain why they did this, because just from reading the paper, the justifications were really not clear. They did it, it worked, it was interesting, and isn't that pure science? No. No, it's not. I really would love it if we did more stuff just to see what happens, but you're supposed to have a hypothesis, have a prediction, and a reason. Does this help medicine? Not immediately. But does it cure cancer? Not at all. But does it open up the path to plant-human hybrids? I mean, yeah, I guess, if you want to, or if you really want blastocytin resistance. Actually, there's a pretty good argument there if we presently are affected by antibiotics that would otherwise get rid of microbes that we can't really tolerate, maybe we could engineer people to tolerate them. That is a pretty decent way to use this. But I might be grasping at straws. I hope you enjoyed this review. Follow for more.